comrades to Achaz here, homestudiobasics.com, helping you make sound decisions leading to a beautiful audio experience that will make you fall in love with music, not gear, all over again. So, we're going to be looking at the KSC 75, KPH 30i, and the Porta Pro. The KSC 75, honestly, is just two pieces, no detachable cable, it's very flimsy. Somebody on Instagram had likened it to clothes hangers on your ears, and I thought that was the funniest thing ever, and I'll probably do some B-roll. <laughs> I love God's headphones. <laughs> I love God's headphones. But yeah, they're not comfortable. Um, they tend to dig into the backs of your ears, and they also break down quite easily over time or so I've heard. I haven't had any issues with mine, but then again, I don't use them that often. So, oh, whoa. The 30i is uh, a lot better actually. It's more retro looking, but also quite utilitarian. Um, it's got your basic headband adjustments. Boom. You know, it's your basic uh, click mechanism. It has a rubber uh, pad on the top. So I'll probably just put some B-roll, but it's got that rubber padding at the top, and I don't really ever feel it on the top of my head. Um, it does tend to dig into the sides of your ears because it is an on-ear, and uh, it kind of reminds me of a Grado in that regard where it will start to uh, hurt after, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. <clears throat> not the most terrible comfort in the world, but not the best. Definitely more comfortable than the 75s, like... I basically never use the KSC 75s, but I will obviously use the 30i a lot because of the sound, but that's um, a topic for in a bit. So yeah, I mean, obviously you can um, switch out the pads. A lot of people like to go with those Yaxi pads. I haven't done that, but um, I'm not really in the in crowd or in the in club. I'm kind of an outcast with regard to mods and stuff like that. So yeah, cable's not detachable here, but it's, it's a nice length for me. It's got the 3.5 millimeter termination and you will need to use a snap-on with these if you want to use it with uh, beefier amplification. Now, a lot of people say they scale well given the higher impedance, but you can use them with an amp and they'll sound fine. But just know that these are mostly for mobile use and on the go listening. You don't really need an amp DAC per se <clears throat> with them any of the three actually. But I've used quite a number of different amps which I'll have in the official article link down below. Build on the Porta Pro. Comes with a carry bag as well, so that's cool. A little pricier obviously than the 30i. The KSC 75 goes for around 20, 30i anywhere from 30 to 40, sometimes less than 30. Uh, I got mine for I think 20 on drop, which I'll have links down below for as well. Uh, the Porta Pro generally goes around 40 to 50, but it's got the weird sort of adjustment where you you put your hand, you put your thumbs on um, both sides and kind of push up, as you can see, and then it it gets bigger. Um, I think these would probably accommodate most heads comfortably, but I I don't know if you have a really really freaking big ass head, uh, you might be shit out of luck. <laughs> But yeah, the cable here is not also not detachable. They have this, these weird like pads here on the side which don't actually make contact with my head. Um, they might for yours, like your mileage may vary, but um, also they have the comfort zone which is entirely useless. <laughs> you have to remember that this headphone came out in like the 80s, so um, you know, in trying to use the comfort zone, you'll find that it just generally goes back to its starting position, like doesn't really work at all, so. Uh, I don't know what the deal was was with that, but again, this headphone came out before I was born. So, <laughs> build on the Porter Pro is pretty good. It's actually a lot smaller in person than it is in pictures. They make it seem pretty big in the in the uh, photos, but it's a lot more compact and also folds in. So, coming with the carrying bag, you could just like stow it away for easy portable use. The 30i doesn't fold. Neither does obviously the 75. Just two pieces. Now the 75 is fairly easy to transport around, but again, I, I don't use it and I wouldn't, I would never rely on it for um, travel or anything like that because I just don't really enjoy, I mean, I like the sound, let's get into the sound, so I like the sound of the KSC 75, but like, you know, it's flatter than a pancake, really, it's like um, flatter, it's like, 
It's flat like an Asian girl's ass. <laughs> and the bass, the bass doesn't just roll off. The bass like just takes a freaking dive off. I'm coming! <laughs> like it's like a cliff basically if you look at graphs and the graph criticals graph really does represent this headphone quite well I mean, it's just it's probably the flattest headphone. I've ever heard it um, alongside like a 612 But the bass is just almost it's like worse not worse But it's like even less there than a k240s bass and that's really hard to do because the 240s bass is very um rolly offy so <laughs> the ksc 75s <clears throat> mids are very flat the treble is very f flat and kind of rolled off a bit it's just kind of i don't know i feel like the 75s is sort of like my most preferred sound signature but i could never just wear them because they're just really uncomfortable and they're annoying to just take on and off like i don't know i just feel like it's not something i ever desire to just pick up and listen to and the, the the bass is textured it's articulate and it's there it's just kind of like dull sounding but again i you may prefer that neutral sound it just kind of gives you a blank stare like metal 571 uh described uh with the 600s like if you're a bass head just run in the opposite direction <laughs> the 75 is definitely the most neutral and dull out of the three this the 30i kind of is a cross between well, let's talk about the Porter Pro first. So the Porter Pro is definitely bassier than both of these. It's more exciting, but it's kind of made for pop music. But you also keep in mind that the mid bass is just a little bit too forward, like it's a little bit too elevated. I think it's elevated by around five, maybe even 10 decibels, but it's not like a bump. It's more like a, a gradual rise, but it's it's very much so elevated, even more than a 30i. Uh, the 30i kind of sits in the middle, which is why I prefer it most out of these two. I feel like at times the, um, the Porter Pro can just feel a little bit out of line. It's not like a huge deal, but you will notice it. It's kind of a subtle, a subtle distinction. But when when compared side by side with the 30i, you'll definitely notice that the 30i just handles uh, music better. Um, it's a little bit more subdued, but not so subdued that it becomes boring and dull like like the uh, the 75. So all three's treble is fairly dark-ish. The distinction between each's treble is not huge by any stretch. You know, the 30i has been accused of being cloudy, which is just kind of asinine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is just so asinine. But... It's definitely not bright or sparkling. None of these headphones are going to ever fatigue you in the treble, that's for sure. Yeah, maybe the 30i could have used a little bit more extra sparkle in the treble, but I personally don't really care. Like, I like how it sounds the way it is. And that's the reason why I recommend it out of these three is because it's basically, to me, a perfect sounding headphone with a perfect mid-range. And, you know, there's a there's a mid-range rise on the 30i and the Porter Pro around 2k. I think the Porter Pro handles they're, the mids on both are a little around the same but you'll notice that because the mid bass on the Porter Pro is a little more forward it kind of makes the mids sound a tad pushback but nothing crazy. I like the Porter Pro but if I had to choose between these three, I would definitely take the 30i every day and twice on Sunday, homie. <laughs> Amplification. If you want to go with something, I'd go with either something like a K3 or a BTR 3K. You don't, you don't even really need to go much higher than that. Like, I wouldn't get a BTR 5 for any of these. A 3K is at probably the maximum. Although you can plug these into other amps and they're going to, gosh, I don't want to use that stupid word, <sighs> scaling, synergy. No, I mean, I can kind of see where those people are coming from because you plug it in and it's like you you have some room to like, you know, you can turn the volume up and not feel like you're going to blow your ears out because the impedance is a bit higher. So I can, I can sort of see what they're saying, but the same time you don't really like you don't need to just go out and freaking 
blow money on a <laughs> on an amp for these like just plug them into your phone like most phones have good dax now mine really it's okay but i much prefer you know a dragonfly red or a btr 3k like i mentioned at most for desktop you could go with a, a k3 if you wanted to but btr 3k is the best all-in-one solution for these three headphones because you can take it with you on the go uh, you can plug it into your uh, laptop and you can use it wired on your desk and it's just it has just the right amount of power for these three so yeah genre wise like i said you can tell by when you listen to it that it was made specifically for pop music and like the dance music of the 80s um, it just sometimes sounds a little bit too bloated for me as if there's just like this e extra layer of fuzz that's kind of unnecessary like it doesn't really need to be there and that's why uh, I personally go with the 30i because the 30i while it does have a little bit of mid bass emphasis it's not like over the top um, whereas the 75 just <laughs> rolls off like it's just ridiculous that said, I kind of like the way the 75 portrays bass in that it's very textured. You can hear like individual notes a little bit better. But as far as like an overall enjoyable experience in a headphone that I can listen to in any situation regardless and always be happy and satisfied, that's definitely the 30i. So the other cool thing is that they work for gaming pretty well. I tried the uh, Porter Pro straight out of the controller. And that's the other neat thing is that you don't even have to use a G6, um, which is my daily driver gaming and film uh, DAC. You can just plug these straight into a PS4 controller and it's going to sound really good. Uh, I made a post on Instagram in which I tried the 30 or the uh, Porta Pro with the controller as I just wanted to get back to basics and um, sounded pretty freaking amazing. So I'm actually playing Fallout right now <laughs> with the 30i, see, and uh, really good good you lie strengths the 30i is very open it's like it's not too sterile but it's also not overly warm and boosty so probably don't you die on me to me would do better for gaming um because you could hear more going on, I think, than you would with a uh, Porter Pro. I feel like the Porter Pro, the mid bass just gets in the way. That's the overarching theme here: is that the mid bass just gets in the way a little bit too much, and like it's trying a little bit too hard. You can tell it's sort of like a uh, not a relic. <laughs> I mean, it still sounds really good, but you can tell like it's just a little bit unnecessary. Um, and why I'm not going to keep it. I like it, but I'm not going to keep it. Uh, I'll probably end up buying a new 30i for myself after I give away this one. So 